Here is okay. I'll just I'll, I'll walk. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, just 100 meters. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. You too. Good afternoon from Kuala Lumpur here in Malaysia, everybody. There are over 2 million Indians living here in this amazing country, making them the third largest ethnic group that live here in Malaysia. So I'm going to be bringing you along today, exploring some of the culture, some of the sights and some of the best food that the Indian culture has to offer. And we're starting it all off at Batu Caves, which is an amazing site and uh, it's just up ahead. So let's head on over there. Wow, that is just absolutely massive. So Batu Caves is one of the most popular places outside of India uh, for Hindus. It's very religious here, as you can see, all the temples and stuff. And uh, right there is Lord Murugan. He's the son of Lord Shiva and son of Goddess Parvati. And I think that statue there has got to be over a couple hundred feet. And just up there, you can see all the rainbow staircases there. Hello. Hello. How are you going? <laughs> and uh, there's around 300 stairs up to the very top, which takes you to the caves. But it is so busy. Wow. 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 They got a full film crew shooting something up here. Got the big microphone, all the cameras. Not sure why everybody's waiting down the bottom. Oh, scarf only for women. Oh, guess we just get to walk straight through. The journey begins, everybody, and we've already got some monkeys. All right, settle down there. All right, don't look them in the eye. That's the trick. Wow. <laughs> you gotta make sure that they don't steal your GoPro or your phone. This lady's running up with bananas. Look, they want it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Look at him. I absolutely hate monkeys, they're just too unpredictable. Look at them. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Alright, we'll get out of a frame. <laughs> Alright, we're slowly making our way up. I'd say we're just over halfway here. And you can see we were right down there at the bottom. I'm not sure if you had to tell with the camera, but it's still not even as high as that Murugan statue. That's just how tall it is. And you can see Kale, the cityscape, over in the distance, over that way. But yeah, it's so busy. So many people coming up. And uh, it is like, a, like a, a lot of stairs. So when you haven't done leg day in a while, all these people are needing to have breaks, but not me. Let's keep going, we're almost at the top. Wow. Oh, it's so wet up here. So you pretty much walk through that area, but you can see like all the water that's dripping down and the whole place is just absolutely soaked. But look how nice it is opening up to all this area here. It's just unbelievable, but yeah, the whole floor is just wet. Like it's like you're getting rained on inside, but that's just all the limestone, all this rock here that is actually filtering through the water and it has to make an escape somewhere. But yeah, it's actually crazy how wet it is. Wow. 
Look at this little guy having fun. I can't believe how many monkeys there are. Look, he's just rock climbing up there, just chilling. But there's also so many just jumping around and wanting to get their bananas. Look, all over those guys, just there, there, just chilling here. But it just opens up to the direct sunlight, it's beautiful. It's such a bizarre feeling being fully enclosed in like a cave, but it's making it still feel like it's raining. But you can hear the drops of water. You can see them dropping off everywhere. Look how full this bucket has gotten from this. Oh, I guess it's a drain. <laughs> but all the water is landing on that roof and then going off into the gutter there and then being collected in that bucket. But yeah, it's just crazy the amount of water there. And going down to like the lower parts of the cave. But it is just such a beautiful sight. Look how open it is. And very sacred and religious as, as well. All right, time to head down. I saw some coconuts down there and also Indian sweets. So we'll try some of them out after a hard walk down. Leg day exercise, I think it's time to refresh. Fresh coconut, six ringgit, or a chilled one for seven. Hey brother, can I get one uh, chilled coconut? Uh, okay, I'll just have this one then. <laughs> one of these, please. Sorry? Oh, I pay first. Okay, okay, thank you. Which person? Over here. See the system. Token, give that. Hey there. Can I get one chilled coconut, please? Yeah, one cold. One chilled, yeah, cold. Seven ringgit. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Boss. One cold, please. Thank you. That's the ways you get it from uh, in the fridge area. Nice. It's so humid and hot here. Especially, it's around like midday, 1 p.m. But look at all these warm coconuts just chilling there, sitting in the sun. And I think this one's ours, coming right up. Oh. Wow. Chopping it open. All corners and he opens it up just like that. Perfect. Thank you very much, boss. Can I come back to open? Okay. All right. Well, we got to get the main view in while we have a sip of this, everybody. Look at all this. I've never actually had a coconut where it's fully open. Usually they just chop open a little bit of the top so you can get the straw in there. But this one is like a full cup. But let's try it out. Man, when it's a hot day in Malaysia, this is the exact drink that you want. Nothing better than the coconut here at Batu Caves. Uh, where is the coconut from? 
from Kerala or Malaysia? Malaysia coconut. Very good. Makes sense. They have an abundance of coconuts here. They wouldn't import them all the way from South India. All finished. Let's get it chopped open. Thank you. Oh, fresh coconut meat. And he chops off a little spoon. But yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Alright. We'll put the tripod on the bin. So we can get two hands. It's proper in half. Nice little spoon here. So, oh, look at all that. All that coconut meat that just comes off like that. Let's try it out. Yum. Oh. Just coconut jelly. So good. So nice. Thank you, boss. Exactly what you need to rehydrate here in Kuala Lumpur. It's so hot. Let's go and feed these pigeons. <laughs> boss, how much for the feed? Hey. Five. All right, I have one, please. What is it? Bir bird seeds? Yeah, bird seeds. Nice. Oh. Malaysia Bank is in there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Alright little pigeons. Oh they're getting excited. Let's uh open this up. Oh this is so difficult. There we go. Alright little pigeons. See how close you guys get to me. Come on. Oh, look at them all. Flocking over to their master. <laughs> Becoming the pigeon man. Oh my god, they're all they're all coming to me. <laughs> look how close they're getting. <laughs> This guy's on my foot. <laughs> Look how close they're getting. Come on. Oh. oh. You ruined my, my moment, mate. Alright, here. Maybe we get down. Like this. Let's see if they actually go into my hand. <laughs> you want some? <laughs> Donation. Alright, here you go. Oh look, I'm touching his neck. Oh, this, <laughs> this brown guy, he's letting me <laughs> grab his neck. Oh look, he's all over me. Come on. He's so chill. He's like a little chicken. Come on, hop on. My little pigeon friend. <laughs> Let's try to get into the middle and start a massive circle around me. Oh my God, look at them all come over. I'm literally a pigeon master, everybody. Look at this. They absolutely love me. Look at them all. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no.
<laughs> this guy's so chill. Alright. Off we go. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm amazed with all the pigeons around that people don't get shot on more. I'm looking around making sure that there's none in my hair or any uh, places I can't see, but I think I'm all good. Nothing uh, that I'm wiping off, but that's the Batu Caves, everybody. We're gonna walk around here because I see some markets. There could be uh, some juices or things that we can buy, but just look how beautiful it is. And you can just see Murugan just towering over everybody else. It's beautiful. Look at that big eagle there. But I also notice there's like cages here. There's, are they chickens or peacocks? I think they're peacocks. Actually like in the caged area. But there's monkeys all around just tormenting them. <laughs> like these guys. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Alright guys, that is part one done of this Indian adventure here in Malaysia. Next up we're heading to Brickfields, which is actually the Little India here in Kuala Lumpur. And it's around a 28 minute drive uh, on Google Maps. And the grab ride is around 20 ringgit, which is, what's that, like five, just under, ooh, just under five dollars. Which is <laughs> ridiculous for a 28 minute ride. So we're going to book that grab now. I'm sure there's a ton of taxis over here, but we'll lock this in see uh who comes to pick us up but yeah 20 ringgit for a 25 minute ride that's just crazy six dollars and 73 australian uh dollars <laughs> all right let's go and wait out the front and he's eight minutes away hi there no i have grab grab where yeah. you go brickfields huh brickfields brickfield yeah okay or Taxi. how much I have grab. 40, same shape. No, no, 20. <laughs> I stay on grab. <laughs> trying to charge me double the price. That's what you get outside the taxi areas. Let's go sit in, sit in the shade. There we go, 2218 over there. He got here early. I thought it was eight minutes uh, on the grab ride, but here we go. 20 ringgit to get to Brickfields. Hello for Luke. Yeah. Luke? Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Brickfield, huh? Yeah, Brickfields, please. That's Little India, right? Sorry? Little India? Yes. Nice. Yeah, this is great. Alright. Okay, thank you. Thank sir. you very much. Okay. Have, you Bye. have a great day. You too. We've made it to Little India, everybody. Let's go and check it out. All right, so this is like the main walking street, I guess, and it has beautiful architecture on the side and it goes for a while. It has all these beautiful little, what do you even call them? Pillars or something like that. But there's a ton of restaurants around here, Indian jewelers, uh, foods and stuff like that. But we'll have a walk. You can see all the Indian snacks. We've got samosa. We've got vado over there being freshly cooked. We've got all the Indian sweets, which We'll definitely be trying out while we're here. But uh, let's have a quick little walk. We'll see if we can grab some food and maybe buy a few items. We even got Pani Puri, I think, over there. Apparently this guy has chocolate Pani Puri. Hi, brother. Do you have chocolate Pani Puri? Yeah, chocolate. Really? What is inside? Ah, oh, so you have sprinkles. One item. Chocolate. chocolate. What is that? Any chocolate. Ah, okay. And how much is it per piece? Per piece? Three piece, five ringgit. Okay, I have three pieces, please. I've had Pani Puri and Dahi Puri in India and other parts of the world, but I've never heard of chocolate. Is chocolate Pani Puri? It's only in Malaysia? Yeah, Malaysia. I've never seen it in India before. Any only Malaysia. Yeah. So he puts the sultanas in there. The little chocolate sprinkles and that is just normal sprinkle yes all right look at all the other sweets that we have here 
jalebi, all kinds of different things, but this is going to be very interesting to taste because when you think of Pani Puri, you don't think of it being a sweet. Oh, that is chocolate sauce? Yeah, chocolate, pure chocolate. Wow. Oh my god. And then we get more. Oh, this is gonna be so delicious. So that is it. All right. Thank you very much, brother. Five ringgit. Okay. Oh, we have five ringgit in our pocket. There you go, bye. Thank you. All right, let's try it out. So with Pani Puri, you're just meant to get it all down in one go. You can't bite it because otherwise the structural integrity goes away. But we're just gonna have to get this. So it has like that kind of crispy, like actual puri bit where it's kind of just like a biscuit looking thing. But inside we got chocolate sauce, chocolate sprinkles. Literally never thought I would ever uh, see this anywhere in the world. Chocolate Pani Puri, let's try it out. Oh my god. So good. <laughs> That's really good. Oh. The chocolate sauce in there. The sprinkles. And then the raisins and sultanas. They make it so good. Ah, oh, thank you, bud. Yeah, thank you. That is absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That was absolutely delicious. Go home. I'm absolutely stopping this down. This is literally like just a nice dessert to have. Never thought I'd find honey puri that, or chocolate honey puri that is like sweet. And usually it's always savory that you have, but let's have the last one here. Wow. <laughs> that was so good. Alright. Do you have dustbin? Great. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Ma'am, that is delicious. Never thought. Do you have chocolate pani puri? <laughs> Do you have cheese pani puri? Ah, uh, no. No, it's okay. Thank you very much. I saw a cheese pani puri just beforehand, so we'll have to maybe come back and try that out. But let's go and explore more of the area. Hey, brother. The Chennai mess. Do you have dosa? Dosa? Yeah, you have. No, vada. Yeah, you have. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's like Chennai stuff. Oh, vada. Do you have fresh? Fresh? Fresh uh, Maybe I'll just have. Oh, lassi. Lassi? Chai? Chai. Yeah, I have just one chai. One chai, you yeah. masala chai. Yeah, masala chai, okay. please. I can just sit anywhere? Yeah. Hello? Uh, yeah, masala chai, please. What do I do, huh? Uh, okay, yeah, one vada. Yeah, masala chai, you there? Alright, so we have the chocolate honey puri just before. I think it's time to have a little bit of a rest. Get some chai, masala chai, and I remember when I was in like Kerala and Tamil Nadu and Chennai as well, I had vada. Very good. This is uh, coconut chutney. Chutney, very good. These things, when they come out like super hot from the, uh, the grill or from the deep fryer, they taste so good. These ones are a little bit cold, but they basically kind of, they look like a donut, but they're totally savory. And they have like onions in there, different kinds of like vegetables as well. And this is like coconut chutney. So you just get a little bit ripped off like this, get some chutney all in there. Oh, that. Reminds me of the times that I was in uh, South India. Very good. Are you from Tamil Nadu or Chennai? Chennai? Chennai. What I'm really excited for is the uh, masala. 
chai. I haven't had like proper chai for a while. Probably since I was in, in Bangladesh last. Oh, yeah. As you can see, they got like little onions in there and the chutney has like chili flakes and stuff like that. Nice little savory snack. And I used to get these for like 10 rupees in South India when I was there a couple years ago. Masala chai? Very good. Thank you, bye. Best in Malaysia? Number one? Alright, let's see. Well, it's super hot, so you know that it's been cooked well. Alright. Perfect combination. Butter and chai. So good. How's that kind of like spicy hit from the masala? You know, sometimes I like milk tea just to get it down, and then sometimes you want to spice it up a little bit with the masala chai. And then, get a little bit of bottom. Reminds me of good times. Yeah, bottle, bottle. Butter, butter, yeah. Small. small, yeah. Thank you. Didn't think I'd be using uh, Hindi here in Malaysia. Thank you. Do you have cool? 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 I just noticed a couple of these bites that I had of the water. They got like super um, spicy, so they do actually have like chilies mixed in there as well so if you rip it off you might get a little bit of chili in there you definitely get some onion but yeah it's kind of just like i don't even remember how they make it it's honestly it's honestly been so long since i had south indian food but it's just all so good uh, water idli i wonder if they have idli as well The other thing is, and something I mentioned in past videos here in uh, Malaysia, is that all the like Malaysian restaurants, the Indian restaurants, the Bengali restaurants, it really is just like buffet kind of style. So you kind of just like come in, and then I think you, it's not like a la carte. I'm just filming this. But they have like all the curries, all the chicken, all the idli, all kinds of different things like that, and then all the meats on this side as well. So it's something that I haven't seen as extensively in any other country before. But it seems to be a massive thing, so I guess you kind of just like get your banana leaf like that guy's getting. And then you get all the sauces, all the meats and all the toppings that you want. Or you can come and just get like the a la carte kind of menu. But yeah, it's very different compared to, I mean, South Indian restaurants that I've been in in other parts of the world, in, in Kerala and stuff like that is usually you just get a menu and you order exactly what you want but yeah they got all you can eat buffet Luke demand, Luke demand. Luke demand. Yeah. maybe you've seen before because <laughs> i went to like select cox's bazaar uh, i went to new new markets <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> all right goodbye Alright, let's finish off the chai everybody. Let's cool down a little bit so we don't have to take small sips.
very good. Have a last couple of sips of water. Very good. How much ringgit? Five ringgit. Oh, five ringgit. Okay, very good. Do I have? Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Delicious food. Have a great day. Definitely. Okay, thank you. Bye. See you. All right. Got some South Indian food into us. Let's go and uh, explore some more of Little India here in Brickfields. You'll notice here in Malaysia is that there's a lot of Indians, obviously, as I mentioned, they're the third biggest ethnic group here, but a lot of them are, are Tamil. So there are a lot of South Indians here, but the reason that a lot of uh, the Indians here are uh, Tamil is because when the British were here in Malaysia, they actually uh, used a lot of uh, South Indians as laborers in the mines, in the uh, rubber tree areas, and where they were doing all that kind of manufacturing stuff like that. So. What was that like 100 or 80, 80 or so years ago and over time uh the people here have just kind of continued to live here there was no real way to go back so you'll notice a lot like there are um kind of churches here in um, malaysia so this is the cathedral of, of saint mary and when i was walking past actually going to that uh chennai the chennai mess <laughs> that's the name of the shop but there are a lot of uh of people going in there that were from Tamil Nadu and you can tell kind of uh, the distinct different like facial features and skin color from kind of North Indians and South Indians so there are a lot of uh, kind of South Indians that are Catholic I remember in my time during uh, when I was visiting Kerala ta uh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka as well there's a lot of uh, kind of Christians and Catholics around there so everybody just gets along here which is good or as far as what I have seen everybody just kind of like mixes it's just like a melting pot of all kinds of different cultures and stuff like that but let's continue walking along we got a couple uh, more shops and stores over this way people eating but we'll continue walking around you know i've been to india five times i think now i've been to the north been to the south been to many parts and uh little india here is a pretty Good representation of actually what it's like there's plenty of street sellers all these jewelry shops and kind of the similar clothing that would be sold in uh, parts of india but the one thing that is the probably the major part of india that is missing here listen there's no honking no honking whatsoever oh there, there's one we had to we, we had to wait a little bit but we got a little honk but the roads are just kind of like normal they're chill there's no crazy rickshaw drivers getting into arguments there's no honking and motorbikes and the big buses that think they just own the roads so that's the only thing that's actually missing here in brickfields to make it 100 percent indian but we've kind of explored down that area we're gonna go ahead and walk up this way because i believe that there is a another kind of section to brickfields and i think just in the distance maybe I'll get a better, better shot when I'm walking up there, but there's the second tallest building in the world. There we go. There's a better angle of it, but you can see it. It's called Madaka 118. And believe it or not, there's 118 floors on that thing. But from most of the city, you're able to see this and it just towers across the rest of the cityscape of Kuala Lumpur. It has the big lightning rod up the top there but still under development, I think. But it's gonna be the second tallest building in the world just after the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. But it's actually super nice, this area. Very nice roads, nice walkways. Oh, that's the other thing that's missing with Brickfields in comparison to real India, is the, uh, the drains and stuff like that. There's usually like holes in the uh, in the drains that you have to be careful of so luckily I don't have to really worry about that much here but it's super nice this area Kingfisher of course you can't have little India without Kingfisher I'm gonna have uh, Toddy that's Indian isn't it? hi brother hi. Are, you, are you open 
Do you have Kingfisher? Uh, sorry, we have Kingfisher, we got Tiger and Pelican, Casbos. Do you have like Indian Stout. Indian beer or Indian drink? No, no, no. no, Tod no. I saw Toddy. Toddy? Toddy is not here. No. Oh, but we got, it's, oh yeah, Toddy is not here. You have Toddy? Yeah, I got Toddy. Toddy, Toddy, yeah. Toddy, yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Small one? Please. Yeah, yeah. Will it get me drunk? Like it's, how strong is it? It's normally about 25% like that. 25%? No, no, no. Yeah. Mm. Alcohol percent in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. percent in there. percent in there. It's normally mild. Sorry? Mild. Mild. Okay, I'll have one. Can you put it in a glass for me? Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? This one. This one. Right. Four, four. Oh, nice. Yeah, very good. Alright. Okay. 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 India in yeah. Malaysia video. Yeah. yeah. So this is Kerala toddy? Yeah. Yeah. I had it once in uh, in Kerala. Alright. So it gets put into the clay pot here. And it's made out of coconut, right? Like fermented coconut. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Wow, so it's super cool clay pot. And if I remember correctly. Ah. Thank you. It tastes kind of like like moon juice, right? So fresh coconut energy drink. So it's basically like fermented coconut. Over time, it obviously builds the alcohol contents, and it's very popular in toddy shops in Kerala, which is in South India. And as I was mentioning before, a lot of people in South India here. But oh yeah, you know what it smells like if you're ever in Australia and you've been drinking, and you would know what goon tastes like. And it smells just like goon. It's like five dollars for like two liters of wine. It tastes awful, but it gets you drunk. But let's try it out. Mmm. Oh wow. It kind of has a mixture between beer and wine. You get that kind of like white wine taste, but it's super sweet. Mm. Very nice. I'm thinking this is like a full cup here and it's only half of this. So uh, it's going to be interesting after a cup of this to see what happens with the vlog. Uh, it actually tastes really pleasant. As I said, I thought it would, it's not very similar to goon. Goon bags, they just, it's called a goon bag. They just come in this big foil bag and it has like a nozzle on it that you just drink anyone that's Australian would know what I'm talking about but it tastes horrific it tastes so bitter but this this is like super sweet and it has that like kind of sense of, of coconut still to it all right we'll enjoy this and I'll update you when I'm feeling it Got the music playing, getting the vibe off. It's around 3 p.m., 2.47 at the moment. And uh, it's a Friday night, so I can imagine people finishing Friday for the weekend. They come here, they got a pool table over there. They got nice little areas to sit and chill. And I can imagine a Friday night here would absolutely pop off with everybody <laughs> drinking the toddy, Carlsberg, Tiger beer, all that kind of stuff. But, Feeling it. Probably only halfway, uh, well you can't really see this, but about halfway drunk on the first one. And uh, it's hitting me hard. It doesn't taste strong, but I know it is. <laughs> Do you get busy on Friday night? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What time do people usually come? Uh, after 9. 9. 
And what time do you close? We, maybe the crowd is overload. We close at uh, early morning 5 o'clock. 5 a.m.? Yeah. And people are still here at 5 a.m.? Yeah. Really? <laughs> we shall just shut it out, uh, close, yeah. close the channel all and we keep it inside. <laughs> Refill. It actually tastes really good. I was genuinely surprised. It's very, uh, very sweet and very delicious. Tastes like a really nice white wine. Really good. Alright, only one sip left. Just been chilling here and uh, starting to fill up. Oh. We'll finish this off. And that surprisingly was a lot better than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be bitter, sour, but that was actually a very pleasant drink. Uh, I can't remember what the price was when I was looking at it on the menu, but I think it was around like 15 or 20 ringgit. But we'll pay. What is the price of the toddy? Toddy. Yeah. 10 ringgit. How much? 10. 10? Oh, okay. Thank you. 10 ringgit, literally like $3, $2, two and a half dollars. It's right, you can keep the change. All good. <laughs> no change. Tip, tip. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you. Bye bye. Oh, I'm feeling drunk, everybody. Just kidding. A little bit tipsy. Uh, well, I'm definitely like feeling the alcohol. I don't drink too much usually. But let's go and see what's next. Now, if I was in India, I'd definitely be catching a rickshaw or bicycle rickshaw home. But unfortunately, we're pretty far away and they don't have rickshaws here in Kuala Lumpur. But they do have the metro, which Delhi has a very extensive metro that connects the whole city. It has multiple lines that takes you from North Delhi to South Delhi to East and West Delhi as well. And uh, the central station is actually just nearby to where we are. So I'm gonna walk there now and hop on the metro over to the Twin Towers, which is where I'm staying. So I'm gonna catch it to KLCC, the city centre. So I think it should just be uh, just over here. Here we go, KL Central. So we need to go to... Where's KLCC? Does this connect us? Oh, there we go. So I need to get to... Oh, how do I do it? I need to get to there. Do I catch the green line and then there? I think so. Book it, no, no. It's this one, right? need to go to uh, KLCC. KLCC opposite, opposite side. Okay, thank you. All right, up and around. Hello, I need to go to KLCC. Other side, and I. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
All right, I'm in the total uh, wrong way. All right, guys, I've been walking around. I tried to get through to the other side of the mall, but I couldn't find any exits on that side. But we're walking up a highway here, you know? This is what you do in India, is you can actually just like walk anywhere. You can walk on the road, you can walk on these tiny little paths here. Although, as I said beforehand, if you're in, you know, some of the capital cities that these would usually, some of these would usually be missing. So you have to kind of do a little bit of a balancing act. But the station that I need to get to should be around here somewhere. Or it's at a four minute walk from the mall that I was at. So let's hope that we can find it here and get back over to KLCC. There it is. That's the one that I need to catch, I think. That's the metro station. Sweet. All right, should just be able to hop onto that. Get straight through. It did make sense because when I was looking at that big map, the red line, which is the one that goes to KLCC, was uh, a little bit off from where we were. So we just kind of like walked that difference. But look how many skyscrapers there are around here. Look at this building here. Absolutely towering across all the others. But let's head on over there. This should be a departures. Maybe this is a, oh my God, it looks like an airport. All right, here we are. They literally have like check-in luggages and stuff like that. Maybe this is where all the like trains that go into, into city come from. Let's see if we can figure this out. It looks a lot more promising. buy a ticket. Uh, Alright, no, I'm going to figure that out later. Hello. I need to go to KLCC. Yeah, MRT, so straight and then left. Thank you so much. Ah, the green one, the MRT. God, this is so much more confusing than I thought. Pretty similar to how it is in India when you haven't been there. All right, let's go. Wow, this literally feels like I'm in an airport. You got Burger King there. <laughs> There's the rapid KO and then you can see that brown sign at the top, the MRT. So if we keep going straight, we should be able to get to where we need to be. There we go, MRT. McDonald's is even here. All right, this looks promising. The stairway to heaven. I feel like I'm back at Bottle Caves, having to walk up all these stairs. But there was a sign that says the MRT is this way. So hopefully it is. There we go, MRT, this way. Or is it that way? No. Ah, here. To the left. And down we go. God. Had I have known the MRT was going to take this long to just get to the station, I would have been in a taxi. I think I've walked over a kilometre just to get here. Oh my goodness. Another one. <laughs> this is crazy. We're going up, down, left, right everywhere. Hopefully I can buy a ticket there. Oh my goodness, down again. Is it like an underground station? I feel like I'm going into the London Underground. Oh my god. Going into darkness. Alright. I think we finally found it. So you can buy tickets over there I think. Or we can try uh, try this one. Buy token. Uh, K L C C two forty. 
Hopefully this works. Why? That's 10, right? Not happening. Hello, I need to go to KLCC. I keep this one check. Ah, okay, yeah. Oh, so it only takes, uh, yeah, okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Oh. So I guess you can only give small notes. Let's see if our thing's still here. <laughs> oh my gosh. That English. was so rude. Buy tokens. K L C C. Confirm. Alright. <laughs> Phase one complete, well, I guess phase two. First we found the metro station, then we actually bought our ticket, but now we gotta figure out what platform we go to. Um, <laughs> how difficult was that? It wouldn't even accept my notes, which is crazy. Even after I got the, the one ringgit ones, only some of them were there. Hopefully we can figure out which one we're on. Got boobs, get checked today. <laughs> Oh, which one is it? I don't want to get on the wrong one. Gone back. Oh, I need to go on to the red one. The... None of these are right. God, I don't know if I'm, this is just confusing everybody or if the toddy has caught up to me. I don't feel drunk anymore. Or I don't even feel tipsy, but I feel like this is a lot more difficult than it should be. So I figured out we actually have a connection. So we got to catch this green line to Pasar, Pasar Semi. And then from there, we can catch the red line over to it. So which one is it? Pasar Semi. Oh, so it's the left side. Oh, it's only two stops. And then we get off onto the red one. All right, God. I guess if I just looked at Google Maps the whole time, I would have been able to figure out where we're going. Our semi and uh, now we'll connect to the red line but yeah, it's like to the right door easy way to get around town all right step one done no I guess this is actually step three but how on earth do we find the next one where we're actually got to spend about five stops to get there KLCC, the red line. Which one is that? 
All right, I figured it out. We've got to catch the Rapid KL. So we go up here. Honestly, without Google Maps, I don't know how people traveled back in the day because I constantly go back there to figure out how to get to places. But without it, even with it, I'm hopeless. But at least we're somewhat getting closer to where we need to go, being KLCC. But it's nice in here. Here we go, KLCC. Perfect. We finally made it, everybody, back to KLCC. Well, everybody, what a day it's been exploring the Indian side here in KL. Finishing up, not at the Indian side, but the Malaysian side here at KLCC with the Patronus Twin Towers. What a masterpiece, but it's been fun exploring that side of Kuala Lumpur. Thank you so much for watching. As always, chase your dreams. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye.